Joseph of Arimathea. In the Bible, all four Gospels mention him by name. And at the moment when Jesus died, what he did was of vital importance. This is his story. In the city of Jerusalem, Joseph of Arimathea was a well-respected public figure. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, the supreme court of the Jewish people. In his personal affairs, Joseph had been occupied with a special task which had absorbed much money and a good part of his time. Just outside the city walls, Joseph had prepared a tomb for his burial. It was cut out of the living rock, a long job for expert stonemasons. The door of the tomb would be sealed by a huge stone which could be rolled across the entrance. But Joseph had another interest. Jesus of Nazareth, a preacher from Galilee. Many people said he was a prophet. Some said he was the Messiah. Joseph believed in him and became a disciple, but he had to be careful. Jesus was critical of the religious leaders. And Joseph was afraid that if he took a public stand, he would be isolated. He would wait and see what happened. It was worse than he could have imagined. Jesus was arrested and accused of blasphemy. A trial by night was not legal, but it was happening anyway. If Jesus admitted his claim to be the Messiah, he would be condemned to death. The high priest Caiaphas put Jesus under oath. Tell us, are you the Messiah? Jesus replied, I am. Blasphemy, shouted Caiaphas, blasphemy! It was too late. There was nothing Joseph could do to help him now. In the morning, Jesus was taken to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. When Jesus claimed to be the Messiah, the priests regarded it as blasphemy. But the Roman governor could dismiss this as nothing more than religious talk, or he could see it as a political crime. The power of execution was in the hands of the Romans, and they had never been slow to use it. If the governor found Jesus guilty of treason, the sentence would be death by crucifixion. The chief priest stirred up the crowd to demand the death penalty, and Pilate gave the sentence. Death by crucifixion was shameful and disgusting. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and one of his disciples. The priests were there. Not content with having Jesus killed by the Romans, they took the opportunity to publicly mock his claims to be the Messiah. Joseph of Arimathea knew that an executed criminal could not be buried in a family tomb. There was only one thing to do. He must go personally to the Roman governor and ask for the body. There was a problem. If Pontius Pilate really believed Jesus to be guilty of treason, he would not give permission in any case. And this was not a good time of day to ask for an audience. Roman magistrates started work at dawn and finished about noon. The afternoon was for relaxation in the bathhouse before dinner. Joseph would not be welcome. When he came in and asked if he could take the body of Jesus for burial, Pilate was surprised that Jesus was already dead. It was also unusual for a man like Joseph of Arimathea to take such an interest in the death of a criminal. Pilate knew very well why the Sanhedrin had condemned Jesus, and when a centurion was able to confirm the fact that Jesus was dead, 
Pilate agreed for Joseph to take the body. Joseph's tomb had never been used, so it was not a family vault, and he would not break Jewish law by entombing Jesus. But it must be done on the same day. Nicodemus, who was also a member of the court and a disciple of Jesus, brought a quantity of spices to sweeten the air when the body would decompose. They left the corpse in the place Joseph had prepared for his own body. There was nothing left to do. It was all over. Joseph of Arimathea was a secret disciple of Jesus because he was afraid of his colleagues. But when faced with a crisis, he came out into the open no matter what the personal cost might be. And the tomb he had prepared for his own burial became the place where the power of death was broken. Jesus was alive, risen from the dead, meeting his disciples. The Bible does not tell us what Joseph of Arimathea did after the resurrection. But he must have gone to look at the tomb. After all, it was his tomb. I wonder what he thought and felt. And what are my thoughts and feelings when I know that Jesus is alive today? Well, I can be sure of this, that my own death will not be the end for me. Thank you so much for being with us in this second series of People Who Met Jesus. I do hope you'll join us again for the next series, which will be on the parables. God bless you.